Okay, so I'm here with Sebastian Wenzel, our shaper here at Fanatic, and Daniel Aberly, the product manager. And um, what we've got is one of the most exciting boards in the lineup at the moment, which is the Gecko. Okay, so Sebastian, first I've got to ask, where's the shark? <laughs> well, the shark got caught. It's not there anymore. Okay. Um, we catch it. But we felt with uh, introducing the Gecko two years ago, it was extremely successful, and we didn't want to have a range of, uh, I don't know, gazillion different free riders. And we felt that if we moved and changed up the, our gecko range a bit, we could have the ideal free ride uh, line without offering too many models. Okay, so Sebastian, these ones are looking very similar to last year's, is that right? Well, we kept the three smaller sizes the same, um, and the four bigger sizes are actually brand new shapes, where we took the best features of the geckos and implemented the best features of the sharks, because there are certain design features from the sharks that the customer looks for. For example, the four bigger sizes, they're a bit longer, so each size up is getting a bit longer. They have a little bit more parallel outlines, which is easier when you get into fun boarding. Actually, this is the main thing for me. The geckos are fun boards. Yeah. Um, so when you get into that, into windsurfing, you want to have fun. At the beginning, it's nice to have a bit of a more parallel outline. Similar thing that we saw on the Hawks for control when you go in more wind. And then on the smaller boards you have, uh, as we see, uh, the real gecko design. On the other hand, uh, if you look at the rail shape, for example, on the bigger boards, you'll see similar design as you see on the smaller boards. So there's a combination of th those two designs, both of them being extremely successful, merged into one range. Okay, yeah, I see why you've done it. So this is it now, the gecko and shark all in one. And um, I'm one of the most <coughs> successful things I've noticed from these boards after having them in the school that I was working in is the fact that people can use like 10 litres smaller than they would do normally on a board, on a free ride board of this size. Yeah, this is something good to bring up actually because um, by being wider um, you get the sensation of having a bigger board, but in actual volume it's not. So that's why you're saying, people say, oh, they feel bigger. So in average you could say between 10-15 liters you can ride your board smaller and you got to picture this way. As soon as you move on the water the width gives you a lot of lift yeah. uh, because yeah. once you're moving the volume doesn't really play such a big role. But even in stability a board sitting a little lower in the water when you're not planing and being wider is much more stable than a narrower thicker board. Just think about a log in the water, you can't stand on it. Yeah. If you have something really thin and flat, doesn't have a lot of volume, but it's stable. As the new geckos, the bigger geckos, got a bit more narrow and a bit longer, they also beefed up a bit like the... On the bigger sizes. On the bigger sizes, yeah. where the old kind of geckos, the big ones we had, were really, really slim. Yeah. So as we combined the shark and got this more parallel outline, which is easier to get on the plane and on the straight line, okay. we also beef them up a bit. So they're still like super slim concept yeah. overall, but they beefed up a bit in the in the bigger sizes to kind of give, give this. But we're talking fragments here. It's yeah. not. It's still a gecko based design. Exactly. Yeah. To keep that in mind, they're still wider in general and still thinner. Yeah. but not as extreme as the first generation on the bigger sizes. Exactly. So it's just a little bit of refinement. You know, when you start a project, you go off in one direction, and then the following years you start redefining bits and pieces in the design, but you keep the main characteristics. Uh, before we flip the board around, you can nicely see here various foot strap options. Two in the front, you can move them in and out. As well in the tail, even... Uh, Single back strap. Also. Single back strap. Yeah. In the smaller size, the plain panel V runs all the way through the board. You can see that beautifully. Power V off the tail. Very nice. Gives you nice lift under your back foot. Again, passive planing. You know, you just stand on the board. You don't have to work the sail to get going. This really helps to lift the tail. Comes with a nice, beautiful new fin that. Dani managed to design. Um, along with this, on the bigger size, we feature actually a slight double concave in the nose area, which makes it a, for a really soft ride in early planning. And one of the best bits of feedback I've had about these boards is how easy they are to jibe. I mean, which is not very characteristic normally of a wide board. So why why is that different on these shapes? That's the biggest benefit, like of the geckos, 
combined with the shark before that we kept the kind of ease of use on the jiving on the, on the gecko line. Well, the reason for the boards being so easy to jibe, one of the secrets is that we have quite a bit of center width here, but then once you come to the tail, you can see that the outline really pulls in. And this makes really for good jibing because you don't have to push so much tail into the water and you can drive off that curve in the back here. That's a really important feature, something that we had on the very first geckos and that gave them a bit of a funky look at the beginning because you have a really round outline and we were a bit worried at the start if that works for control but it does beautifully and uh, these boards have quite a bit of high-end performance actually. Inegra Carbon pork sandwich yeah. with the basalt lamination on the bottom that sort of is the limited is the top of the range and uh, if you look for something light and strong this is really what you want to get so which one have we got here Sebastian well as you can see kind of a wood look which is actually not a wood it's a bamboo it's a very nice material to work in boards because it's kind of like a unidirectional fiber material you see all the fibers running in this direction this is why we need the support from the material from the tail to the nose it's very functional it's a uh, strong extremely cool looking and you got a nice weight to it so uh, this is our medium price range construction oh that's actually pretty light what's going on there well this is our famous HRS construction if you really look for the best value for money in the market this is your deal here. Uh, same shape as the other ones, just a little different construction, higher glass content, super strong. That's why it's the name HRS. This gets used a lot in windsurf centers and places where the boards really need to be able to take a beating. This is it. And this is actually combined, like you said. It's a pretty nice way, you know. Yeah. So what's yeah. important for the schools, that one, the HRS version, has the most optional insert. Maybe. So you kind of have three full insert version so from beginner to winner kind of